Good evening from the health education campus of Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland Clinic. I'm Chris Wallace of Fox News, and I welcome you to the first of the 2020 presidential debates between President Donald J. Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. This debate is sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates. The Commission has designed the format, six roughly 15-minute segments, with two-minute answers from each candidate to the first question, then open discussion for the rest of each segment. Both campaigns have agreed to these rules. For the record, I decided the topics and the questions in each topic. I can assure you, none of the questions has been shared with the Commission or the two candidates. This debate is being conducted under health and safety protocols designed by the Cleveland Clinic, which is serving as the health security advisor to the commission for all four debates. As a precaution, both campaigns have agreed the candidates will not shake hands at the beginning of tonight's debate. The audience here in the hall has promised to remain silent. No cheers, no boos or other interruptions, so we, and more importantly you, can focus on what the candidates have to say. No noise except right now as we welcome the Republican nominee, President Trump, and the Democratic nominee, Vice President Biden. How you doing, man? How are you doing? I'm right. Gentlemen, a lot of people have been waiting for this night, so let's get going. Our first subject is the Supreme Court. President Trump, you nominated Amy Coney Barrett over the weekend to succeed the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court. You say the Constitution is clear about your obligation and the Senate's to consider a nominee to the court. Vice President Biden, you say that this is an effort by the president and Republicans to jam through an appointment and what you call an abuse of power. My first question to both of you tonight, why are you right in the argument you make and your opponent wrong, and where do you think a Justice Barrett would take the court? President Trump, in this first segment, you go first, two minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. I will tell you very simply, we won the election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate, we have the White House, and we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. In fact, uh, some of her biggest endorsers are very liberal people from Notre Dame and other places. So I think she's going to be fantastic. We have plenty of time, uh, even if we did it after the election itself. I have a lot of time after the election, as you know. So I think that uh, she will be outstanding. She's going to be uh, as good as anybody that has served on that court. We really feel that. Uh, we have a professor at Notre Dame, highly respected by all, said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. He's been a professor for a long time at a great school. And uh, we just, uh, we won the election, and therefore we have the right to choose her. And very few people knowingly would say otherwise. And by the way, the Democrats, they wouldn't even think about not doing it. If they had, the only difference is to try and do it faster. There's no way they would give it up. They had Merritt Garland, but the problem is they didn't have the election, so they were stopped. And probably that would happen in reverse also. Definitely would happen in reverse. So we won the election, and we have the right to do it, Chris. President Trump, thank you. Um, same question to you, Vice President Biden. You have two minutes. Well, first of all, um, thank you for doing this and looking thank forward you. to this, Mr. President. Thank you, Jim. I, uh, the American people have a right to have a say in who the Supreme Court nominee is. And that say occurs when they vote for a United States senators and when they vote for the President of the United States. They're not going to get that chance now because we're in the middle of an election already. The election has already started. Tens of thousands of people have already voted. And so the thing that should happen is we should wait. We should wait and see what the outcome of this election is, because that's the only way the American people get to express their view is by who they elect as president and who they elect as vice president. Now, what's at stake here is the president's made it clear he wants to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. He's been running on that, he ran on that, and he's been governing on that. 
He's in the Supreme Court right now trying to get rid of uh, the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, which uh, will strip 20 million people from having insurance, health insurance now, if, if, they, if it goes into court. And, and uh, the justice, and I have nothing, I'm not opposed to the justice, but she seems like a very fine person. But she's written before she went in the bench, which is her right, that she thinks that the Affordable Care Act is not constitutional. The other thing that's on the court, and if, if, if it's struck down, what happens? Women's rights are fundamentally changed. Once again, a woman could be helped pay more money because she has a pre-existing condition of pregnancy. We were able to, they were able to charge a woman more for the same exact procedure a man did, gets. And that ended when we, in fact, passed the Affordable Care Act. And there's 100 million people who have pre-existing conditions, and they'll be taken away as well. Those pre-existing conditions, the insurance companies are going to love this. And so it's just not appropriate to do this before this election. If he wins the election and the Senate is Democrat, a Republican, then it, he goes forward. If not, we should wait until February. All right. There aren't 100 million people with pre-existing conditions. As far as the say is concerned, the people already had their say. They, okay, Justice Ginsburg said very powerfully, very strongly, at some point, 10 years ago or so, she said a president and the Senate is elected for a period of time, but a president's elected for four years. We're not elected for three years. I'm not elected for three years. So we have the Senate, we have a president. He's elected to the next During election. that period of time, during that period of time, we have an opening. I'm not elected for three years, I'm elected for four years. The and the 100 million started. people, Joe, the 100 million people is totally wrong. I don't know where you got that number. The bigger problem that you have is that you're going to extinguish 180 million people with their private health care, that they're very That's happy simply with. not true. Well, you're simply no, going that, to socialist. That, that, you're going that, to socialist. We're now into, gentlemen, we're now into open discussion. Open discussion. Open discussion. Yes, I agree. Go ahead, Vice President. Number one, uh, he, he knows that uh, what I proposed. What I proposed is that uh, we expand Obamacare and we increase it. We do not wipe any. And one of the big debates we had with 23 of my colleagues trying to win the nomination that I won, we're saying that Biden wanted to allow people to have private insurance still. They can they do. They will, under my proposal. It's not what you said, but and it's not what the party is, has said. That is simply your party doesn't say your party wants to go socialist. My medicine. party is and me. Socialist right now, I am and the Democratic Party. You, Joe, you know that. I am the Democratic Party right now. The platform of the Democratic, Democratic Party is what I, in fact, approved of. What I approved of. Now, here's the deal. The deal is that it's going to wipe out pre-existing conditions. And by the way, the 20, the 200 million, the 200,000 people that have died on his watch, how many of those have survived? Well, there's 7 million people that contracted COVID. What does it mean for them going forward if you strike down the Affordable Care Act? Joe, you've had 308,000 military people dying because you couldn't provide them proper health care in the military. So don't tell me I'm about happy to talk about. If you were here, you would be 200, deal. it would be 2 million people because you were very late on the draw. You didn't want me to ban China, which was heavily infected. You didn't want me to ban... All right, what, tell me, right? You would have been much later, Joe. Probably later. Mr. President, about 2 million people. We're not going to get a moderator. We're going to talk about COVID in the next segment, but we'll go ahead. Let me finish. The point is that the President also is opposed to Roe v. Wade. 